Hi, it's Kyle, and I'm here to talk to you about Anchor. Anchor is a hosting platform where you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Best of all, Anchor is completely free. It's what we're actually using to create our podcast. If you're thinking about making your own podcast, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Now, back to the show. My favorite was when we had Sean on the show, and we were explaining him to how we do the top five, and then we tell him he doesn't have to line it, we don't have to line up, and he just goes off before anybody else is ready. I don't know if you remember about that, but I just think about it. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. It was uh, nice to have Trevor Owen Disc Golf reach out to me on Instagram the other day, because he... Made, went out of his way to try out the Cat City course and let me know what he thought about it. So, Trevor, if you're listening, thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah, hit me up if you know you're going to be in the area, and I'll try to reach out there. Not oh. creepy. Not creepy. Yeah, no strings attached. <laughs> now, because I had to say it, it's weird. But if I now didn't have creepy. to say it, yeah, if I didn't say it at all, it's would have been fine. Just, just imagine if you still had the van. I'm the guy in the big green van. Dude, I'm telling you, green makes it not creepy. If it was any other color, but like green <laughs> or red. I do have a friend who has a big white van. Yeah. See, and there like, were just but... some kids at the park, and they just came up to him, and was, they were like, that's a creepy van. <laughs> that's like, thank you. It's my home. You could also use it as like kid deterrent, you know, like. <laughs> kids will avoid me if i right. drive a creepy van <laughs> if you write free candy on the side of a van you'll probably get no kids coming out and by you and the cops you'll probably hear the from the cops. cops yeah the cops but hey i like the cops they they keep a close eye on the world to make sure is that where we're going with this no we're, we're... just gonna move past life <laughs> Move right on to death. <laughs> Past life on to death. Oh, I did want to ask: Did we um introduce ourselves in the last episode? No, I did not think so. We've been really bad about that lately. Yeah, I was thinking about. I don't know if I told you or if I told someone else when you took that break. Just putting, seeing if I could put an episode together myself. Yeah. Yeah, did I tell you about that? <laughs> you did tell me about that. So I, I thought of my, uh, if I ever try it, thought of my uh, opening phrase. It's going to be, uh, welcome to the old No Disc Golf podcast, where sometimes we introduce ourselves, sometimes there's two of us, and sometimes nothing matters. Kyle's falling apart. I don't know if, if anyone has seen him, but I'm pretty sure in about three weeks we'll have nothing but bones left of kyle just a pile of mush yeah that's what kyle meant by just let's move past life yeah deteriorating fast yeah had another concussion this past week so that was allegedly an accident yes (laughs) (laughs) wait we don't have to say allegedly because it wasn't us this time it was me well i don't know what you mean you didn't hit yourself in the head I didn't hit you in the head, so we don't have to use allegedly. We can just say... But it still was an accident, allegedly. Oh, okay. According to... According to... uh, Yeah, let's let's do that. According to sources. Yep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You want want to tell them what happened? How how it happened? Oh, it was a car trunk hitch. Nope, fuck. Hatchback. What do they call it? Trunk? (laughs) <laughs> door the trunk door hatch oh the hatch yeah because it's in the back it's a hatchback you know in uh wow in uh england they call it they call it the boot <laughs> today we learned what a hatchback is and it makes sense it does make sense not like england where they call it a boot it doesn't make sense tell me there's tell no me. boots back there 
Tell me, oh, there might be, but that shouldn't. That could be. That could be where it came from. <laughs> One guy who just kept. <laughs> that's where I keep my boots. I'm Kyle. I'm Eric. And this is the Oh No Disc Golf podcast. This is episode seventy six, which is why it's a little bit of a mess because we don't give a fuck. <laughs> just kidding. We care about lots of other things. All the things. <laughs> we care about everything. Many things. But we're also going to joke about them all, too. That doesn't make us insincere. Allegedly. Or, yeah. I don't think it makes us insincere. But we're friends, and we make this show. And we talk about disc golf sometimes, and sometimes we don't. Most of the time, we do. And you're just going to have to hold on and listen to both of them. If it's your first time here, good luck. If it's your... Well, I don't remember what the line was. Fuck. Words. If you've been here before, you're a beautiful fucking person. I remembered it. Just takes. We forget our own lines. We don't write any of this down, you know. We just no, uh, say things. Usually it's very natural. Yeah. We just say stuff. We took a week off and then we forgot everything. Speaking of, we're also taking next week off. So, But it's planned. Jot that down. Don't. Yeah, go ahead and jot that down, guys. Don't look for an episode next week. Sorry. It's Eric's fault. Yep, I am um, headed up to Cine, uh in the UP of Michigan for a week. And looking forward to that. I have one, two, three, I think four courses on my bucket list that I want to play. I'll see you next week. Ah, got him. Got him. Well, I guess one of the courses is one that I've played many times, but I always like to play it while I'm there. And then there's a new nine-hole course about ten minutes away. And then I'm actually planning to meet up with uh, one of our guests, the Disc Golf Dad. Was that his name oh, on Instagram? Oh, sick. Yeah. yeah. And Marquette when when we're up there. So he's going to show me Dope. the two two best courses in the area. That is awesome. Yeah. I love that. His name's, yeah, his name, did I say that? His name's Eric, too. Eric Martello, I believe. Also, if you're in the Marquette area, head on over to Cricket Wireless and go through him for your all your wireless needs. <laughs> Shameless <laughs> free plug. Shameless random plug. So specific. Uh, yeah, if you're not from Marquette, then don't worry about it, but... Jeez. You never know, you know. This is like for one person. Well, hey, you want to do some plugs for us? That's then? a personalized ad. Actually, you're welcome. You're welcome, Eric. You're welcome. Yeah, Eric. If you, if you still list this, no free plugs, Eric. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll pick up the payment when I see you. <laughs> just give me your pennies. That's all I want. <laughs> I mean, I would take a nickel. That's just, I would absolutely take a nickel. Yeah. Eh, I'd take pennies. Pennies are cool, too. But, you know, if you wanted to give me a nickel for the one ad, I'd take it. Oh. Oh, no, no you yeah, have to no, give me a penny for every listen that we get on this, Eric, if you're listening. So I'll <laughs> I'll keep track and I'll let you know. Yeah, we'll just jot that down and charge you. Mm -hmm. We'll bill you. Don't worry. Can you imagine the <laughs> audacity of these fuckers sending sending a random bill? Just out to sending him. bills, <laughs> just for talking. <laughs> I know you didn't ask us to, but here you but, go. But yeah, we did it. I feel like if we send small enough bills to big enough companies, they might just pay them. Yeah, you're you're darn tootin'. <laughs> is, that, is that like some sort of fraud? Did I just admit to possibly committing oh, fraud? Oh yeah, in the big future? time. All right, cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a good one. Do you want to... That's a uh, good open. Head on over to disbaron.com and use code ONO10 for 10% off all orders. Head on over to frictiongloves.com and use ONO20 for 20% off on all orders. Also, head on over to our Teespring store. I used to have the website memorized. And use code ONO oh over there for free shipping. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. But mostly just Instagram. 
That's where we're at. That's where we do things. We're lazy. Yeah. We have we have old content on TikTok that if you're just listening to us for the first time, you can you can get catch some old content and then uh I think YouTube still gets all our episodes. YouTube automatically gets all of our episodes so no one can listen to them. And it's good. Yeah. Well, uh, why don't you break down and tell us about your... Have you, is this the first time you've ever played this course, or have you played it before? First time I've been... Yeah, I'll do a little course breakdown, backslash review, backslash, backslash. Backslash, backslash. <laughs> Go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I just wanted to hear about the course you've played. It's called Paco Sanchez. It's one of the... Uh, like, I don't know what to call it. A course. A course in Denver. It's like downtown. It's weird where it is. It plays along like a train tracks or a pretty active train like thing. Like there's a good chance you hit a train with a Frisbee at some point. Is that how active? Uh, It's like a, you know, little passenger train. So. Oh, okay. Maybe though. Yeah, but if there's like, uh, you could probably avoid a throw at that time. Yes, it's, yeah, but I don't know, it happens. But yeah, no, I put the, it's it's pretty hard to play that course without putting a disc onto the tracks at some point. We do know Kyle likes to hit moving vehicles. I do, previous experience. <laughs> there's a couple holes that are like, they break every rule of how you should design a course. There's a... You want to hear what it is? Yeah. It's a tunnel shot with the basket on the left at the end of the tunnel along uh, the sidewalk. So the sidewalk is the tunnel. It's totally an active sidewalk. Walking path, yeah. Yeah, there's people walking around all the time. Bikes. It's completely blind, the shot. And you have to throw it pretty hard. Right, because you got to throw it straight down a tunnel. Right, so there's just a, just such an opportunity to blast somebody in the face. Is it like one of those tunnels, too, where like the sidewalk turns right after it gets out of the other side of the tunnel? Or can you see like how everybody's coming? Uh, it turns, so you can't see uh, what's coming at all. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, it's completely blind. That's so cool. It's such a terrible idea. Whoever designed that course really hated people. Is there at least a sign? No. Oh my god. So it sounds like the, the people... The basket is like literally two feet off the sidewalk too. It doesn't make any sense. All within the circle. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the city of Denver just wanted to do anything they could to put a course in. They didn't really care about the doing it the right way, it sounds like. Oh, 100%. It was... It was... It's a... It's a terrible course. It's It really is. It's a good course, but it's a terrible course. Fun to play, poorly executed. 100%. Good bones. You can tell that there could be a good course there. Too many homeless people. It's uh, dangerous. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Is there a... Uh... Well, if you go to the Paco, Paco Sanchez website, it makes the course... Or it makes the park sound pretty phenomenal but it's all lies was there kids playing there like at the playground there were actually it, it, it's such an odd like it's a nice community but at the same time they're just kind of overrun with homeless at the moment so it just makes everything feel really sketchy right maybe maybe the homeless people are actors that they fly in to hang out there right I'm just Maybe. spitballing here, so that way just when the parents bring the kids to the park, they're like, that's what you do, that's what happens to you if uh, you don't get your mental health checked. I feel like there's got to be cheaper ways of doing that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess it depends on how good of actors they are. Uh, but overall, I'd give it a C-. minus. And how could they improve? House the homeless population somewhere else, not on the course. 
or in the middle of a fairway. Did you hit any homeless? Uh, there's a good chance I hit one guy. See the guy laying down. On it was that one guy laying down, yeah. I don't think he would have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty bad. Yeah. He said he was wearing a jock strap. Maybe we had a cup in there and you could have just bounced it right off the cup. Could have, yeah. Yeah. It it was a poor poor situation. Mm-hmm. But Are you gonna go back? I yeah, I, I it kind of um I haven't done any cleanups this year yet because I've been injured because of my own mental health and a whole bunch of things. But it did kind of reignite that because that park is fucking disgustingly trashed. So I uh, feel like there's an always sunny episode about this. Oh, you're not talking about cleaning up the homeless people, just the trash. Well, I can do both. <laughs> Are you going to wear those little berets they did in the You know it, episode? yeah. And get like a mini bat. Mm-hmm. You took my bat, D. <laughs> yeah, we'll lead that right into the Nico fight, yeah. Is that what the thing was what we were... Is that it's what good. you're asking? Because that's what I'm... I'm, sure. I'm dying to talk about it. I'm Again, down to. Even though we just talked about it, I'm like dying to talk, talk about it. but Because mm-hmm. I, I needed to know. Uh-huh. But I, now I know. Yeah. Back up, bro. <laughs> so if uh, if you've been living under a rock like Kyle often does, eh, not even under a rock. If you're living away from social media, then you don't know about the fist fight that Nico almost got into that Kyle predicted back in like episode six. I feel like I, I just predicted it. 60. Like, and somehow and I predicted it 75. That like as it happened, I predicted it. Yeah. Craziness. So it was like twice now that, that he's he's brought it up. The original time was back in We Side Disc. It didn't break down to a fist fight, so didn't that wasn't but quite quite the, a prediction. He the, tried. The last one. Um He tried. Yeah. So on round two, hole eighteen. Right after Nico went out of bounds, a PDJ official called him for a time violation and and told him he has to take a penalty stroke. And Nico's reaction to that was to immediately get in his face and then immediately tell him to back up. It made no sense. And it was the funniest piece of... Of disc golf video that I think I'll ever watch is Nico rushing the guy. Realized after he was like in his face, he's like, "This is really, it's really, really stupid of me." Back (laughs) up, man! Like you know, like and then and and then proceeded to make it worse for himself. Exactly. It's kind of like how, like how you, you know, like hold me back, bro. Hold me back. Yeah, that's what I was I was telling somebody else. That's what he was doing, but no one was there to hold him back. But no, yeah, no one was there, so he was just like, "Yeah, back up." And the PDJ official he literally got just his face on his face was the look on his face was just like, "Dude, I I don't even know why you got this close to me in the first place. I literally right. have no idea why you're here." What's your like? What's your deal? Yeah. So um. He got dropped from his two sponsors, Gateway and Clash Discs. Oh, wow. Yeah, it didn't take long. Gateway was like hours after. Holy shit. Clash Discs was like 24 hours after. And he is probably... Damn, because he had his own line and shit going. Yeah, I, that's what I was fun. I, I was thinking. I was like, well, it might be good because a bunch of dyers might buy the... His like new ginger or something it is that just came out, and try to put something Fuck. funny like you know relating to that on it. I did not realize it fucked up his shit like that. Yeah, I kind of he didn't even really do anything. That's what. So here is my thing with I can I can understand Clash because Clash is a I can't remember its finish if it's Finnish, but that's where the course was or that's where the tournament was was in Finland. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're finished, so it's kind of like, 
I don't know, you come to our country and and disrespect like, you know, the the people, like I can see that. But Gateway got into a deal with Nico, knowing who Nico is, knowing he's a hothead and was fine like making money off of him to then not back him when he makes a mistake kind of seemed a, a little that's insane rude but for at the both, same time companies i think he's going to be suspended for at least 2 24 months i'm going to guess is going to be the the suspension time well for what what did what what technically did he do um i can go find the exact wording of it but it's like a a possible of insight like a like a was inciting he like, violence or intimidation? Yeah, he, he, yeah, insinuating that he was going to be violent. So here's in 2000, because I did a bunch of research on other people that got suspended. And I probably should have wrote all this down, so I'm just going to list them based on what I read. In 2016, Bradley Williams got a two-year suspension for taking like a 30 or a 20 or something on a whole in protest to how the rules made made you play that hole. It was an island hole. I don't think it was number 17 at Winthrop Gold, but it was something very similar. And instead of trying, he gave up after like his third one and threw every disc in his bag out of bounds, like on purpose, like protesting. They gave him a two-year suspension for it. He came back in 2018, took like a, took three out of bounds strokes off the tee at hole 13 in Jonesboro and all, walking off the tee, he accidentally quote unquote, accidentally bumped shoulders with Matt dollar. And then they gave him another 18th month suspension for that. So this, I think at least deserves that 24 month suspension. If, if you're still playing by the same rules that they gave Bradley Williams four years ago, I hate all of that. Yeah. Uh, well, the only thing I think that made it worse for Bradley Williams in 2018, and I think he would have either gotten no suspension or a much smaller suspension, is he was still technically on probation for quote unquote protesting a hole in the in the wrong way. I guess I don't remember what they called it for his taking like a thirty something. Um, I do think Nico deserves some sort of a sus- suspension. I don't think he made the sport look bad in any way. He just made himself look foolish. And right, he just looked like an idiot. Yeah, he he did do a formal apology and said he's going to step away from disc golf and touring for a while, which he which he's done before. Uh huh. I don't think he's going to have a choice in the matter anyway. So right. I guess it's better to get ahead of it and make it your choice for him, you know, rather than being told he can't. Probably is his thinking. What an idiot. He's not smart, but I mean, he's been dealing with lots of just, you know, uh, everyone is not everyone, but a large group of people has been calling him a pedo pedo because he's dating cat merch. Who's 20 years old. It's like a 13 year difference, but it's like, it's none of, it's none of their business. That's none of anybody's business. That's legal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that I don't I, I'm I don't think that played into it, but I'm sure it doesn't help his mental health and his anger at all. He he seems like the kind of guy who's like, man, all these people are attacking me, man. Yeah, and though that's what I'm surprised. I'm surprised in the apology he didn't try to like push push the blame off on onto somebody else. You know, like you he's know usually what I mean? pretty good at accepting when he yeah. fucks up, but yeah. he fucks up just so often. It's just, it's funny. I feel like if we didn't have all this live disc golf that I enjoy watching, we would not be caring if people were taking two minutes on a putt or a throw or whatever. Like, we would never see it. We would never see the millions of comments on Facebook, Instagram, and whatever else about, oh, blah, 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 took two minutes, blah, 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 took two, you know, longer than two minutes. Because the post-produced would just cut that out, right? You know, they'd cut in, like, the the last 45 seconds of it or whatever. Right. It's just a pace of play thing. I don't know. And I get it, but it's just, it's, I don't know. Until until we're able to put a PDG official on every professional card, we, they need then, to leave it yeah, up they to the, be the card to do one it. on yeah. one card. And that's what, they haven't released a statement about any any of that. 
because it's all all that all that matters right now is Nico's reaction. Seems targeted, right? Yeah, to the to the thing. So, like, there's no information on if he got his warning or any of that. So, seems like the PDGA just give no information. Yeah, just yeah they they just wanted to play good guy in it and. I don't know. I feel like if it was any other player that did it, it wouldn't be so seen as like one sided. Like, yeah, it's just he's so. Uh, you already know he's so stupid, and it was aggressive. So yeah, yeah. it's fine. And again, I'm not. It. We're not defending Nico's reaction to it. We're just yeah. saying no. There should be more information out there on on what happened. Other than totally. I know, like what led up to that completely. Did he get, did he get his warning? Is there PDJ officials on every card? Is the two big things. Can we fight the officials now? Can can we fight? That's important. We need to know. We need to know. Who These counts as an official? Questions. Does that count the tournament director? Can you kiss him? Um, I think you need consent for that. Anyway, before all that happened, we got to watch the President's Cup, which is a team-based event. Uh, USA versus Europe. They do head versus head. Um, match play and stroke play on like nine of the best holes of the beast. That was a lot of fun to watch. We seen Paul Macbeth during the stroke play go eight for nine at on like like during that. So that was pretty exciting just to watch him come out and just shoot almost perfect. Beastly yeah, at the beast. Um, USA won. By a lot. I was kind of rooting for Europe because that would have been cool because it would have been the only time or first time it ever happened. Going into FPO at the actual tournament, they played FPO played the same exact course, same pars and everything. So that was kind of kind of fun to watch how they they play courses. There is a lot of holes that are gettable and then there's some that there's just you know, taking par is like taking a birdie for them on some of the holes, which yeah. is, I think it's fun to watch because it really plays into somebody's mental game, you know, to like, I've said it before, but like to try to keep your, your mentality at like point at its high, um, when you're taking, when you can't keep that like birdie rate going, uh, taking home third is Henna Bloomrose at plus 20. Taking home second was Evelina Salonen at plus 15. And taking home the win was Paige Pierce at plus 12. Let's go. Yeah. So now Paige Pierce has moved into the, I think it's the person or the, she's at least the number one major wins for all FPO players. I can't remember if there is a MPO player that has beaten her for major wins. But either way, congrats to that, because that is a huge, huge statistic. Sorry. Over on the M- MPO side, we had the new hot round at 12 under was shot three times this weekend, twice by Eagle and once by Paul Macbeth. Wow. E- Eagle averaged an absolutely insane 10 and a half strokes per round, and the course record last year, or before this year, was 11 under. So, yeah, he absolutely shot out of his mind playing with no forehand at all. No forehand at all. No no upshots, no he did not throw a single forehand the entire time. He threw one each round he threw one lefty tee shot on hole 2. Nice. Yep, and I think he carded the birdie every single time. If not, it was 2 out of 3. Yeah, he's good at lefty too. Or, Two out of four, or three out of four. Uh, yeah, I and I feel like what was better than ever, which he is already a good putter, but I feel like he's at least been practicing putting all the time because it's you know it doesn't leave a bunch of wear on your elbow or like your arm. Yeah, spending some time hitting the chains. I mean, dude, he was like his like edge of circle putts were like yeah that's going in every time. He was a hundred percent from circle C one from circle one. Up until the final day where he made like one small miss. And it was like not like a gimme putt. You know, it was like edge of circle. I think like either right. kneeling or he had to like try to like duck under a tree or something. I don't remember exactly, but. 
it was Missed disgusting. It. it was like, huh, haven't had that happen in a while. Yeah, it was it, it was just insane to watch his putting from from like yeah, that thirty three foot mark was just nuts. Taking home third in MPO was Kevin Jones at twenty five under, Paul McBeth with second at forty one under, and Eagle McMahon ending McBeast's five times reign of the European Open. Open champ is Eagle McMahon. Did I say that twice now? Ta-da! So, welcome back, Eagle. Now he gets to go on to Deeglo and defend his title there. Good luck, Deeglo, is this coming weekend. And I just want to set, shout out good luck to all competitors, um, especially the local Tri-City guys. I got quite a few friends down there. I'm not going to try to list them all, but I'll be I'll be checking scoreboards. For the, on the amateur side to see how you guys are playing. Three, two, one. Top five. five. Oh, yeah. For our top five this week, we picked our top five Super Smash Bro characters who would super smash at disc golf. <laughs> so... Who do we have to talk to at Nintendo to see if we can get Nico LaCastro in Super Smash Bros? He wouldn't atta- like ever attack anyone, but he'd tell him to back off. He could be like it'd just be like an intimidate move yeah. where where people would just like stay away from him then. Right. <laughs> he just wants to be alone. <laughs> oh, I hope Nico never listens to our podcast because he'd probably hate us. I, the The amount of good things I've heard about Nico through, not like through pros, but like that pros have said, like you know, you know, n- randomly. Um, Scott Stokely just posted a video where uh, Nico stayed after like a clinic to help like the kids who didn't quite get it, kind of thing. So, did he get up in their faces? Probably. 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 Anyway, our first he, Super Smash... He's like Smash... the Donkey Kong of disc golf. I didn't even get to it. <laughs> I stole it from you. Yeah. Well, number five is Donkey Kong. <laughs> Kyle spoiled it. Um, he does that cool spinning move, so I feel yeah. like he'd do like a discus move, you know, and just chuck it. He also can throw characters really, really far, so... Also, he's just... It seems like a primate, and they, they're just strong. They're strong, and they got long arms, you know? They got, like, much longer arms. A lot going arms. on for them. Yeah. I don't know why he we prob- put number five. He probably could have been number one, but that's okay. We're not doing an order here. This is just... I like how we both thought about it at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no order. Just, uh, just five good characters. Nah, this is an order. All right, number four. Oh, shit. Uh, Fox. Star Fox. I don't know what moves he has, but he was always one of my favorites. This is why a gun. He, he made the list. <laughs> He's a blaster. He does that weird sprinting thing, so he could get like a hell of a run up. I think he's got, a, yeah, he's got a fire run up. <laughs> oh, I'd be like, or that could be his jump putt, you know, where he like jumps yeah. that close to the basket <laughs> and let's go. <sighs> yeah, but yeah, he's just like one of my favorite characters. For number three, we picked Samus. Because she's got that charge up gun where I feel like if we're picking characters, she's allowed to use that, right? Yeah. You know, like loaded oh, to totally. do it somehow. Also, she can do like uh I think she can do like a tractor beam. There's like a whole bunch of things. Yeah, she's got so much more than what they actually give her in the in the Super Smash Bros. universe. Yeah. Crazy dexterity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she can like her suit allows her to spin into a ball, like a size of a basketball and i haven't figured out the science on it but and then can lay bombs so yep. bombs underneath the disc maybe the very least she'll just kill everyone there count it and then be wanted for murder but you know for a small moment in the time everyone's dead and the time where she gets arrested she's the winner of the disc golf tournament accurate can't find can't find any problems with those. No thoughts. holes in that. Yeah. Yep. What's well, number two? Captain Falcon. Because he has the Falcon Punch and the Falcon Kick. Falcon Kick. 
It's uh, it's kind of like Fox does his sprint thing, but I'm pretty sure it's stronger. So again, another one that's my probably my favorite, one of my favorite characters to play as. So that's why I made the list. I like it. And number one, everybody's favorite Kirby, because he would just you know whoever's on his card would just he'd inhale them and then take their skills as he needed them. Because that's what Kirby just does. poops people out, too. Yeah. So, you know, he's on the, ca- on the card with Kevin Jones, and he's got a 35-foot putt. Just suck up Kevin Jones and make that putt real quick. He also does something with a star that I think he could figure out a way to help him. Does he ride the star? I think he rides the star. Okay. Now, I guess that won't help. I mean, he gets some of the horse. I thought maybe he throws it somehow. Like a ninja. Like a ninja Kirby. I mean, I don't think there's any public transportation where Kirby lives, so... Uh, helps him get around. Ninja Kirby sounds like a really expensive vacuum, actually. Yeah. Wait. That'd be cool. Who was named first? Kirby this Kirby, or Kirby the maybe vacuum? that's where they got it. That's Which one? Got the name. Which one came first, though? Chicken or the egg? Yeah. Kirby or the Kirby? Well, that was our top five list. Hit us up on Instagram and let us know what Super Smash Bro character would Super Smash at this go. And uh, that's episode and that's, that's our 76. Show. That's it. We did it, bud. We can uh, put a stamp on that and words I don't know. and things. Words I think that's, stuff. that's pretty much it. Appreciate that, you. Just a reminder. Thank you for listening. We won't be here next week for episode 77, so tune in two weeks from now for episode 77, and we'll see you guys later. Yeah, catch you in a couple weeks. Bye. On the flip side.